Hi divers, this is Alex Pierce again from Scuba 2000 with another tech tip. Some ideas that uh, might make your diving a little easier, a little more fun, and maybe safer too. Today's tip, tip is, is a simple little uh, tip that might save you some real aggravation. Might actually save a scuba dive, and that is the whole idea, to stay underwater, right? So yeah, here we are in the dive boat, all set to gear up and get into the water and start enjoying our scuba dive. Real simple. We have a standard scuba tank here, and we have a regulator. Let's put the darn thing together properly and go diving. What do you do? Well, first of all, you take off that tape off the uh, tank. Don't throw it on the boat. Don't throw it in the water. And, of course, a little bit of air just to be sure that the air outlet is not plugged up. Take your regulator and mount the regulator properly, of course. And that's done by removing the dust cap, putting the regulator over. That's the air going in. Air goes out. Those two parts match. Just goes like snow, so a little bit and snug the knob back in there. <clears throat> Doesn't have to be too tight. Just in snugly. You guys with the big, strong hands Go easy, just snugly like so. Okay, we're all set to go. Let's see if it works. Turn the air on. If you've done it properly, nothing happens. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Oops. You hear that, Kevin? What is that? It's not the hoses. It's not the regulars. There's a hissing sound. Sure enough, the O-ring in this tank is worn badly and is leaking air. Very, very common, particularly if you're diving down south. The O-rings are subject to salt and sun every day, four or five, six dives a day, every day of the year. They try to change some regularity, but sometimes they break prematurely. Air's coming out of there pretty quickly. Let's turn the air off first of all. So what do we do? Well, we get a spare O-ring. We replace the O-ring. Right. Anybody have a spare O-ring? Most professional dive boats have spare O-rings. Most divers, once they've been diving a few years, also carry a couple of spare O-rings, but not always. What do you do? You have two choices here. You fix the O-ring, or you don't dive. Choice number two is not really a choice. We came to dive, we're going to go diving. Let me show you what you can do. First of all, you need to get that O-ring out of there. In order to get the O-ring out, there's a couple of things you can do. I have seen divers take the regulator off and get a pick, a dental pick, or a safety pin, or a needle, and dig away and hack away at that O-ring until they finally get it out. It's not designed to fall out. It's in there fairly snugly. And if you do that, you've destroyed the O-ring. You have no choice at all, no chance at all of reusing it. Let me show you another little tip. This tank is still under pressure. If you look at the pressure gauge, I can see it's still under pressure. I have not purged the regulator yet. Let me see. Yep, still air in there. Now, you know this is wrong. Don't do this, but watch. If you slowly but surely open that tank knob, let's let a bit more air out. It's pretty tight. A bit more air out. And now you can turn that knob. Watch what happens. Turn it slowly. Very, very slowly. Hear that? A little more. You know what happens? The O-ring falls out. There it is, Kevin, right by your foot. There's the O-ring. Don't lose it. If you're on a dive boat or on a dock, try to catch it before it lands on the floor. So there's our O-ring, that bad O-ring that is trying to stop us from going scuba diving. We're not going to let it stop the dive. I want to give you, give you an idea of what the problem is with the O-ring. Okay, so take a look at this simple diagram I made, folks, and you'll understand how an O-ring works and what we're trying to do today. Now, I'm not an artist. But this is what an O-ring looks like when it's fresh and new. I've sliced it in half so you can see the cross section. You see it's perfectly round. This is the O-ring that's in the tank, the O-ring that's worn out and leaking. And you'll see that this O-ring has a feather. We call them a feather on this one corner on the left-hand side. You see that little feather sticking out? And that feather goes all the way around that O-ring on that corner. Why? Well, I'll take a look at this valve. Again, I'm not an artist, folks. This is a valve. This is the groove into which the O-ring fits. Air comes out through the middle, you see? Right here at this corner, where the high-pressure air meets the low-pressure ambient air, atmospheric air, is where that feather develops. This feather forms right there. So what are we going to do? Well, this side of the O-ring is perfect. There's no feather over here. Suppose we flip the O-ring over and put it back in. Now, this clean side will be right here where the seal is made, and it just might work. Let's give it a try. Yep, that's the worn side. So we'll take it out. Flip it over, put it back in. If it's really, really dry and you happen to have some silicone grease, it's not a bad idea. Tiny bit of grease. Vaseline works too. Gosh, sometimes to help a diver get back in the water, I've even used ordinary water. A little bit of water on the O-ring. Oh, so I flip the O-ring over, put the regular back on, turn the tank on. Let's go diving. Turn the air all the way on. 
indicator valve shows the air is all the way on, we just save the dive. How about that? Now, this is a stop gap measure. Carry spare o rings, learn how to use them properly, how to change them. But in the odd emergency where you don't have a spare o ring and the o ring's leaking, there's a tip just might save a dive. Have fun, be safe. This is Alec Pierce, Scuba 2000, Tech Tips.